السلام علیکم ڈیئر فرینڈس ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل مانے میں سمیر قریشی آئی ایم ڈوئنگ ایم فارما اینڈ ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از ویکسین ڈیلیوری سسٹم وٹ کمس انڈر دا سبجیکٹ نوبل ڈرگ ڈیلیوری سسٹم سو لیٹس بگن وتھ دا ویڈیو سو واٹ از ویکسین ڈرگ ڈیلیوری سسٹم ویکسینس آر دا فارم آف میڈیسنس دیٹ آر گیون ٹو دا پیشنٹس ٹو ایوک امیون ریسپانسز لیڈنگ ٹو دا پروڈکشن آف اینٹی باڈیز اور سیل میڈیٹیڈ ریسپانسز ہیئر in our body normally when any virus attacks or any uh, disease occurs so our body naturally produces antibodies antibodies are the compounds that are produced against antigens antigens like virus bacteria so to fight those virus or bacteria our body produces naturally antibodies and gives us immunity that will combat infectious disease agents or non infectious agents like malignancies malignancies means cancer now the traditional type of vaccines can contain either dead or live attenuated microorganisms inactivated toxins which are called as toxoid protein subunits polysaccharide antigens means normally vaccines like corona vaccine or anti rabies vaccine any type of vaccine which are generally used they contain attenuated microorganisms means dead microorganisms or the dna of microorganisms or rna of microorganisms means cellular nuclear content of microorganisms so these microorganisms uh, they are dead or attenuated they enter our body and produces immunity by producing antibodies our body naturally produces antibodies against these antigens now vaccine is a material that induces a immunological response Uh, mediated resistance to a disease but not necessary an infection so why are we using control delivery in vaccine formulation vaccines can be formed in such a way that its delivery can be specifically controlled by the use of polymers that will encode the vaccine inside term we are using control delivery in vaccine to enhance the rate of delivery of vaccines so that we could not uh, use redosing in multiple times and which will also lead to the reduction in the number of doses of vaccines as a vaccine is released in a controlled way so there is no redosing which is needed so why are we forming controlled vaccines here are the four major factors first is immunization failure with conventional vaccines it is seen that uh, after applying two or three doses uh, after one or two year the vaccine failed to produce specific immunity against the virus or bacteria that's why we are using control delivery in vaccines second to reduce booster and prime dose third antigens are released in a controlled manner so we can control the rate of flow of antigens and release of antigens next site specific targeting of antigen to the receptor site uh, what are the polymers used in the control delivery mainly four types of polymers are generally used PGLA which is polylactic glycolic acid PLA which is polylactic acid PWMA which is polymethyl macrylate methacrylate PS which is polystyrene now in the uh, controlled delivery of vaccines we have first type mucosal delivery of vaccines mucosal delivery means delivery of vaccines or any type of drug through the mucosal layer now mucosal layer are generally present in the GIT under the skin in our oral cavity in the nasal cavity okay so it is a vaccine which is needle free technique it is used for the delivery of vaccines in which vaccine are given via the mucosal route including mu- nasal mucosa oral cavity and gastric absorption so first is oral vaccination as we discussed earlier mucosal type of oral vaccination which is uh, this route is very easy to administer safe and there is no need of trained personnel for administration means a person with a patient can uh, take by himself any this type of vaccine oral vaccines are given that are absorbed through the walls of git it occurs the absorption occurs through the git means through the stomach and intestine now what are the barriers to the oral route git fluid can destroy the vaccines enzymes secreted by the git mucosa can degrade the vaccine and it is time taking because the absorption takes time it has to follow ADME process absorption distribution metabolism next creation so this is the structure of the stomach 
absorption occurs through stomach large intestine and small intestine stomach contains barriers the topmost layer is mucosal layer and then microvilli and tight junction and epithelial cell so what are the barriers to the GIT absorption barriers means anything that would prevent the absorption of vaccines through the gastric environment first is gastric pH gastric pH could degrade the vaccine second is tight junction uh, in the presence of tight junction the drug cannot be particularly absorbed through the cells next is mucus mucus is responsible for producing thick layer which can prevent the absorption of vaccines next is microbes microbes could degrade the vaccine now b is oral cavity vaccine after oral vaccination which occurs through GIT second is oral cavity vaccination in which absorption occurs through the oral cavity in the mouth it is generally used for the delivery of vaccines with low molecular weight it is much easier and safer the degradation of GIT is prevented what are the barriers to the oral cavity keratinized and non keratinized epithelium now see the oral cavity the absorption occurs through the cheek generally through the cheek and the lower floor of the mouth under the sublingual mucosa now the epithelial inside the skin can uh, inside the cheek contains saliva oral epithelium langerhans cells basement membrane connective tissue bone or muscle now what are the barriers through which the absorption of drug could uh, be low first is keratinized and non keratinized stratified epithelium which may prevent the absorption if this means that keratinized means that it is too much dry non keratinized means that it is not dry if the skin of skin inside the mouth will be dry the absorption could be slow now example of dry skin could include over excessive use of tobacco pan gutka etc which decreases the oral saliva now second is saliva third is enzymes enzymes could degrade the uh, if they would react to the drug they would degrade the drug now next intranasal vaccination intranasal route of vaccination constitutes the delivery of vaccines through the nasal vestibuli through the nasal cavity respiratory regions and nasopharynx it provides ease of accessibility higher vascular mucosa faster pick of take of antigens what are the barriers to the nasal absorption first is tight junction presence of mucus and enzymes now see the nasal cavity the absorption occurs through the nasal cavity from the nose and what are the layer of the inside the nose first is nasal epithelium then the basement membrane and what would be the barriers that would prevent the absorption of drug from the nose first is tight junction epithelium mucus and enzymes now transdermal delivery of vaccines transdermal delivery of vaccines as we already know transdermal route of vaccination occurs through the skin skin offer many advantages as it is safe site for vaccine delivery system because it contain most amount of mucus cells immune cells oh, i'm sorry it consists most immune cells skin offers both systemic and mucosal immune response and it is easily to access it's also a needle free method for delivery of vaccine now how needle free we will discuss later see the layer of the skin stratum corneum stratum lucidum stratum granulosum and stratum germinativum i have not written the other three layers because it is after the dermis so what are the barriers stratum corneum means the barriers if it is too dry the absorption would be slow now types of the transdermal delivery of vaccination first is liquid jet injection second is epidermal powder immunization third is topical immunization liquid jet injection usually uh, uses a high velocity jet to deliver molecules through the skin into subcutaneous or intramuscular region now examples of li liquid jet injection include pen jet injects for insulin and tears vision for insulin now see in the left side we have the conventional use of needle or syringe for delivery of drug uh, the delivery of drug or the delivery of the liquid drug occurs uh, through a bulky area it occurs like a bulk in the bulk form and absorption is slower and it also gives pain because bulk of drug is released now in this in the right side area the delivery occurs 
in various directions so there is no pain in the delivery and the delivery is faster second is epidermal powder immunization it is same type as uh, the injection the, that we discussed earlier but in this dermis dermal powder is used in the in place of liquid powder injectors are same as before but in this powder form is used it is more stable than liquid injectors commercially available examples are particle mediated epidermal delivery developed at oxford university which is now owned by pfizer now see in the left there is gene gun which is an other topic not here second is epidermal powder immunization which is this we use powder instead of liquid for immunity through transdermal route third one is jet injector in which a high beam of jet is used and fourth one is tattoo device so uh, the general concept behind this is just to explain that how the skin is penetrated through these powder immunization see the second one this one epidermal powder immunization mm, the absorption of the powder drug takes place in various direction so the response is much faster than the needle now third is topical application topical application of vaccines with adjuvants resulted in the good delivery of antigens inside the skin now we uh, here we used adjuvants adjuvants are generally the compounds which are uh, which increases the absorption of the drug basically like oil oil absorbs easier to the skin and cream gel ointments these are the uh, form of formulations that are absorbed easily to the skin topical application refers to those now it is further divided into first colloidal carriers which includes nanoparticles and nanocarriers which consists of the antigen inside them formed as solid dispersion or solid solution liposomes are also included in this category second is micro needle now in the example you see you see learn from the examples in the images now in the example you see a micro needle is very small in size and it consists of very small micro needles which are in micrometer size these micrometers micro needles consist of the drug and the polymer now drug here we refer to vaccine it consists of vaccine and the polymers and up to 100 needles are present in the micro needles which are inserted through the skin just like a bandage it is applied over the skin and it delivers the vaccines and it penetrates the stratum corneum to create micro holes and delivers the vaccine now approach is solid micro needle with dry powder in it is also used and it consists of polymer with vaccine for rapid and controlled relief third is thermal ablation or micro ablation thermal ablation means a uh, generation of micro size holes in the skin with heat and then the vaccine is delivered thus it increases the absorption of vaccine through the skin commercially available products thermal ablation means applying the heat you know that in winter our skin it is very dry and the absorption is much slower as compared to the summer in summer our skin is a little bit oily which uh, increases the absorption of the skin penetration of the skin so thermal ablation means uh, application of heat over the skin very small it will be small amount of heat over the skin to increase the delivery of vaccines and absorption of vaccines commercially available products are pasco system by Altia Therapeutics via Derm device by Transform Limited Israel. Now this is the microporation device. Uh, in the skin it is attached, and microporation device uh, gives RF energy, radio frequency energy, which transmits heat and delivers the vaccine. These are the references from which I took. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and like.